oftentimes the toughest part of drawing reaction mechanisms is getting started with that first elementary step. In this webcast, I'm going to introduce you to a principle that I've used over the years that's helped me get started drawing reaction mechanisms. The principle also will help you develop a mental database of reagents and their typical chemistry. The principle is called the most reactive starting material principle, and it takes advantage of the fact that the most reactive component in a reaction mixture usually gets involved pretty early in the mechanism. Let's look at the principle in detail. To start things off, I've drawn up a reaction for us from the synthesis of Caliphenol C by Wood in 2004. The details of the synthesis are unimportant. What we'd like to do is draw a mechanism for this transformation. So we can see what happens overall. On the whole, a hydrogen atom at the alpha position of the ester is replaced by a carbon group. And recognizing that that is an alpha position next door to a carbonyl is important, as it turns out. But how do we get started drawing this mechanism? Should we just lose the proton since we know that position is acidic and move ahead from there? Well, not exactly. Under acidic conditions, losing that proton to form an enolate would be absolutely unreasonable. The trick to getting started here is to find the most reactive starting material or the most reactive component in the reaction mixture. And even though it's abbreviated, it's the LDA that turns out to be the most reactive component. You may be familiar with the abbreviation LDA as short for lithium diisopropyl amide. And this is the most reactive starting material in the reaction mixture. Now, I knew that because I've seen LDA used in other contexts. What if you had never seen this compound before? Well, the next important step, after you've identified a material as potentially the key starting material, the most reactive starting material, is to identify its role. We want to decide what role is it playing under these reaction conditions. And there are four answers, basically, to this question. It's either an acid, a base, a nucleophile, or an electrophile and identifying which role the most reactive starting material is playing will get you off and running with the reaction mechanism. In this case, we see a ridiculously polarized lithium-nitrogen bond in this reagent that's often better represented as just Li plus and N minus. And although the Li plus is happy, the N minus is an angry nucleophile or base, right? The negative charge signals to us that that nitrogen is either nucleophilic or basic. And now we're getting somewhere, because now we can see that under these reaction conditions, strongly basic, removing the proton from the alpha position using the amide base is going to be a thermodynamically favorable step. Believe it or not, we can just iterate this process once we draw the enolate intermediate that follows the first step. So I'll draw an abbreviated version of that here. Although I won't go through the entire mechanism, what you can see is that now we can apply that same principle, the most reactive starting material, or the most reactive intermediate, if you like now principle, to the remaining molecules. So we have an enolate left over, and we have still remaining the alkyl bromide, THF, and HMPA. The latter two additives are unimportant, but the alkyl bromide we know is a good electrophile. And so we can start thinking about this nucleophilic enolate getting together with the electrophilic alkyl bromide. And in fact, that exact interaction between those two components forges the key carbon-carbon bond during this mechanism. This simple example shows us how we can use the most reactive starting material principle to get started drawing mechanisms, but it runs a little bit deeper than that to the extent that reactive starting materials, which are usually called reagents, show up in a variety of contexts and usually play the same role in most of those contexts. A perfect example is lithium diisopropyl amide. This is almost always involved as a strong base because of this extremely negatively charged nitrogen atom, right? To give you other examples of molecules in this same class, lithium NH2 and sodium NH2 fall into that same class. These are all reagents that get involved very early, typically, in the mechanisms of the reactions that they promote. On the other side of the table, on the acidic side, there are a lot of common acids that are used in organic reactions. Acetic acid, ACOH, is a common one. 
Paratoluene sulfonic acid, which is abbreviated as PTSA, is a very commonly used acid. And as weird as the name sounds and as cryptic as the abbreviation looks, when you see that this is basically sulfuric acid with a tolo group replacing one of the OHs, you can see why it's as acidic as it is. When you find the most reactive starting material under a given set of reaction conditions, it tells you a lot, not just about the mechanism, but also about where the reaction fits in the broader picture of organic reactions.